Je vais donner la parole à monsieur, à monsieur Sin Clary, qui est fondateur et vice-président de Future World Foundation. Et il vient, il vient si j'ai bien compris, de United Kingdom. Il vient du Royaume-Uni. Vous avez la parole, Monsieur Sheen Clary. Thank you, sir. Um, with your permission, um, I will speak in English. I understand perfectly well, but... Uh, la tradition est assurée des écouteurs pour. Vous pouvez prendre ça à l'entrée. Merci. Merci beaucoup. The, the best way, perhaps, of framing the issue is to try and put it in the context of the challenges that we face in a fragmenting world. If one heard the discussion that was taking place about the future of the European Union a few hours ago in the plenary hall, where 28 states today, perhaps 27 after Brexit, face the challenge of defining a common purpose based on a collective set of values to order themselves in accordance with one set of norms to achieve a particular outcome in respect to the world at large. Africa faces that challenge. Africa is, as we all know, 54 countries. It is a continent which is three times the size of the United States of America. The distance from the southernmost point to the northernmost point is 8,000 kilometers. It's characterized by linguistic diversity, cultural diversity, ethnic diversity, and of course, as I've said, 54 national states. So in that parameter, one has to decide what it's possible to achieve at national level, at the level of regional economic communities, and at the level of the African Union, as the moderator very correctly set out. And I think the reconstitution of the Charter of the African Union, the adoption of the new Partnership for Africa's Development in the late 1990s, the decision to encourage better governance in African spaces through the African peer review mechanism are self-evidently all highly commendable approaches to addressing this challenge. But if we take it forward, I think it's important to get a sense of what makes for success. On a national level, on the level of a country, Success broadly can be defined by a reasonable degree of safety and security for one's citizens, appropriate physical infrastructures, water, power, transport, and telecommunications, ICT, if you will, to enable economic activity to take place, appropriate investments in the creation of human capital through health services and education, policies that encourage persons to put capital at risk in search of reward. And all of that requires reliable, sound, and trusted institutions. So that's the challenge that we face at the national level. And as we address the expansion of scope out to the regional organizations within African spaces and to the continental institution, we have to find ways of squaring that circle all the way. If we're honest, we know that Africa has not been well served either by its colonial past or by aspects of the period after independence began in African spaces in 1957. Education has not been fit for purpose. Health services, as we heard in the plenary before lunch, are often lagging in many parts, although splendid efforts are being made. And the quality of African institutions themselves is not always up to standard. We have a population today on the continent at large of 1.316 billion people. 44% roughly are in urban areas. And the median age is 19.4 years. We are by far the youngest population in the world. By 2050, if things proceed roughly according to projections, 
we'll have 2.5 billion people, of whom 60% will be in urban areas, which means an increase of not only 1.5 billion Africans, but also nearly a billion urbanites. And the median age will only have risen to 24.8 years. So the challenge in respect of education, training, and employment opportunities or other economic opportunities through entrepreneurship is gigantic. And that, it seems to me, is where our attention ought to be directed as we address this challenge going forward. All of the indicators that we've seen to date suggest that good governance, according to the measures that are used to assess that, is very closely correlated with better performance in terms of human development index. So there's very little doubt that getting it right leads to higher standards of opportunity and of welfare for Africa's citizens. But unless we take it seriously collectively, and that can't only be done by governments, governments are to the fore as the democratically elected representatives of people where elections exist, but all other aspects of society, business, civil society at large, faith groups and others, have a collective responsibility to realize this. If we don't achieve it, if we do not provide good education, decent health services, appropriate accommodation and opportunities for employment and advancement, we will squander a demographic, a demographic dividend and frankly, properly be held to account by those who follow us. Merci, Monsieur le Président Shin Shinclari.